This is Behind the Scenes. I'm Scott Sexsmith. A terrifying situation for a Guelph family following a recent visit with family in Khartoum. Guelph Today reporter Taylor Pace is here with more. Taylor, after watching the video as part of your story, I just can't imagine the fear that uh, the family endured during that 10-day stretch. Wild. Yeah, they're um, they're absolutely traumatized. Um, she said every little sound is making them them jump now and obviously coming from Guelph they weren't really expecting that. <laughs> so walk us through uh, what what happened. They're there for 10 days and then on day 10 they make a break for it, making a stop in a nearby town to uh, uh, collect one of their uh, their daughters. Where did they go and how did they get out? Yes, yeah, so um, they they were stuck in her mother's home for 10 days with no electricity for five of them. They had minimal access to food, no access to running water. When they were finally able to leave, they went from Khartoum to Omdurman to pick up her daughter. Um, and they had to go through a number of heavily armed soldiers. Her son thought they were going to be killed. It was, it was just so terrifying for them. When they finally collected her daughter, they caught a bus to um, the border of Egypt first and then to Cairo. Um, that bus cost her 10,000 USD. Crazy. Um, just for her and her three kids. And the entire bus ride, um, they were they were so scared and they had all of their valuables and their money stashed inside their clothes because the bus would be regularly stopped by armed soldiers who would, who would search everybody. Um, so that lasted six days and when they finally got to the border, they ended up having to sleep outside on the ground um, because they couldn't get into the country yet. So once they did, they were able to take the rest of the ride into Cairo. And that's where her family is now. They're renting an apartment until they can come home. I can't imagine. Now, Rania's family aren't the only ones uh, trying to get out, uh, but many are facing obstacles, uh, not the least of which is fear. Yes. Yeah, so um, in Guelph, especially, we have a number of, of uh, locals who have connections to um, Khartoum. They have friends and family there. Some of them were able to be evacuated. Some of them were able to escape either to the countryside or outside of Sudan. But a lot of them weren't so lucky. Um, prices have just been going up for everything since the conflict started. And uh, so basically, the only people who can escape are the ones who can afford to. And the ones who are still there are facing severe water insecurity, food insecurity, there's a lack of internet access, some of them can't access their bank accounts. Um, and somebody opened the prison, and now there are criminals who were suspected of war crimes um, under the previous dictator running loose, and looting is absolutely rampant. Um, it's just, it's really not a good situation. No, it's unimaginable. Are there specific efforts, uh, Taylor, being made to provide assistance to uh, the internally displaced people and, and refugees from Sudan? And are there organizations or even initiatives uh, working on family uh, reunification or sponsorship for those affected by this conflict in Sudan? One of the sources I spoke to, Mohammed Malik, um, he is working with some organizations to advocate for more family reunification um, in Canada, especially like we did for Syria, like we did for Ukraine. Um, and we're not really seeing that yet, but th there's hope that it's going to happen. Any word on when uh, Rania and her family will be able to return to Guelph? Uh, she doesn't know yet. Um, I think they're trying to, um, you know, stay with her, her mother and her sister for now, as they're all pretty pretty traumatized. Um, yeah, well, not sure. A very scary situation. Taylor Pace from Golf Today. Thanks for this, uh, Taylor, and thanks for taking us behind the scenes.